Ladies and men who are gentle, thank you for attending today's reading of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. <clears throat> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one and down he ran. Hickory dickory dock. <sighs> Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Jack be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack, jump over the candlestick. <laughs> Nameless here, forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? As much wood as the woodchuck could chuck. If a woodchuck could chuck wood. This it is and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. He did a diddle. The cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such spot, and the dish ran away with the spoon. Darkness there, and nothing more, nothing, nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With the silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Merely this and nothing more. Then the ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating his Christmas pie. He put up his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, What a good boy am I. <clears throat> Quoth the raven, nothing more. Much I marveled at this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider who sat down beside her, and frightened Miss Muffet away with such name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Jack Spratt could eat no fat, his wife could eat no lean, but together both they licked the platter clean. Then the bird said, Nevermore, never, nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to give the poor dog a bone. When she came there, the cupboard was barren, so the poor dog had none. Oh, uh, never, never, nevermore, nevermore. <laughs> but the raven, still beguiling, all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door, ride a cockle horse into a bamberry cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse. Rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. Meant in croaking, nevermore! This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. <laughs> she shall press on evermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, 
perfume from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife but couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there yeah, he kept her very well. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether temp tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Blah, blah, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. <laughs> Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore. There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile, he found a crooked sixpence, and a crooked style. He bought a crooked cat, which caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a crooked little house. Quoth the raven, nevermore, back into the chamber turning. All my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. But where is the boy who looks after the sheep? He's under a haystack fast asleep. Tis the wind and nothing more. Tis the wind. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, and there step it. A stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and can't tell where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, bringing their tails behind them, perched and sat and nothing more. <laughs> Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting, get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring. He got into bed and bumped his head and couldn't get up in the morning. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, she is sitting, still is sitting on the pallet bust of palace, just above my chamber door. Solomon Grande, born on a Monday, christened on Tuesday. Married on Sunday, Wednesday, took ill on Thursday, grew worse on Friday, died on Saturday, buried on Sunday. That's the end of old Solomon Grundy. Shall be lifted nevermore. <clears throat> Thank you.